and it broadbands on it everything. It, it comes out with a bit spurious just about it every everywhere you sit with it. Um, I don't think it's relative to. Uh... Hello, my name's Mike M Zero MSN, and today I'm mobile. Um, <laughs> Now the reasons why I'm making this video is because I have been asked a question uh, by a relatively new ham. He's purchased himself a uh, three element or four element um, beam for two meters. Uh, and uh, he's pointing it to our local uh, repeater. Um, but he's seeing uh, that he's got an S signal or his S points are down on his beam came paired to his vertical uh, and uh, it's a polarization issue obviously and this is what I said to him and he said well I don't understand that can you explain polarization Ooh, I thought yes okay let's let's have a go so I uh, probably made an absolute and total mess of it so I thought I would uh, make this video to see whether or not I can actually explain it <laughs> On my way to work. Oh well, it's all a bit of fun. Right, you have a, uh, a four element or a two element uh, horizontally polarized beam. Uh, and that is transmitting on uh, two meters for the sake of argument. Okay, uh, and it's putting out quite literally a flat um, transmission. If you can imagine a pendulum um, swinging from side to side, okay, that is the signal it's putting out in this direction. It's a flat horizontal transmission. Um, the the wigglies go from um, from the bottom to the top of the antenna. Uh, and from the top to the bottom of the antenna, uh, constantly uh, and on 144 uh, megahertz, it's doing that 144 million times a second. Okay, it's travelling up and down the length of the antenna. Uh, and as it's travelling up and down the length of the antenna, um, it's creating this flat beam because it's horizontally polarised. Now that's being pushed out. Um, on a flat surface, if you like, you know, across the across the, uh, the the ground, perpendicular, all the way along at the height of the antenna. It's also going up and down, etc. But let's let's pretend it's a, it's a flat beam going towards the the vertically polarized antenna. Now, if it's a very narrow flat beam doing this, when it hits the vertical uh, antenna. Uh, it's only going to excite uh, a small portion of this vertical um, antenna because it's a flat beam. It's not exciting the entire uh, height of the antenna. It's only going to be um, exciting a very small part of it. Um, and this is why um, a vertical antenna and a flat um, horizontal antenna um, it's not you're not having the same amount of power being transferred because the, uh, the vertical antenna is only seeing a very small portion of the horizontal transmission now it's exactly the same in reverse so if you're transmitting on a vertical antenna which is sending out vertical radio waves when it hits a horizontal um, antenna is only exciting a portion of that as well so you're not getting uh, a full excitement of, of the antenna so which is better well the vertical antenna is uh, a lot better for local use if everyone is transmitting uh, using a vertical antenna then obviously a vertical antenna is better for local use but horizontal is better for DX, for long distance uh, uh, copies, but, you know, over a thousand miles. Um, and this is because the more elements on a horizontal beam, 
okay, or on a beam. Uh, the more the, the RF, the signal, gets drawn to, to the front, okay? Um, you're not going to increase power. 10 watts is 10 watts regardless. What you get is something called gain, um, where the more elements, the higher the gain. Uh, and that's because it focuses your 10 watts uh, forwards down the line of the of the beam. Um, the beams are used if you want to focus on a particular area or country or, or part of the map, if you wish. Um, it, uh, it becomes less sensitive to the uh, behind the antenna and certainly less sensitive to the side of the antenna. Uh, but in the front of the antenna it becomes more and more sensitive and this is what increases your gain. It gives the illusion um, of, of, I mean, let's call it a 10 dB gain, which is a 10 times factor. Um, so if you're putting 10 watts out of the back, um, so 10 watts on the driven element, by 10 times 10 it is, is um, what is it? It's, it's 100, isn't it? Uh, 10 watts at the, at the uh, driven element, 100 watts coming out at the front. Uh, no, it isn't. It's only 10 watts coming out at the front but it has the equivalent gain or power of 100 watts. You can't create more power, you only create more um, direction, if you like. So it has the equivalent of putting 100 watts out. Does that make sense? Yes, it does, I'm sure it does. Um, okay, so let me just uh, pull in and let these people go by. All um, transmissions lose their polarity over a certain distance, That's with the exception perhaps of um, satellite. Um, and the reason why they lose their, their polarity, because as they are transmitted out uh, horizontally, they'll hit or get reflected off of buildings or the ground, or as they hit the um, clouds uh, or the ionosphere they get reflected back down again and as the earth rotates so that um, reflection is gently turned okay so this is why you get QSB why you can hear QSB if you put up a, um, a vertical antenna and a horizontal antenna on two tuners in your uh, radio shack and listen to the same transmission. Sometimes you'll hear them move from one radio to the other as the radio wave coming in literally turns and one aerial gets excited more than the other. Anyway, I think that, that may, have, may have explained it. Um, to recap, if you've got two antennas, um, one vertical, one horizontal, they are going to be at least 20 decibels down on each other um, because of the fact that the, you know, the flat will not, and not fully excite a vertical and the vertical will not fully excite um, the horizontal. Um, if you've got a horizontal to horizontal, it's going to excite fully. Vertical to vertical will excite fully. Um, but with, um, like I said, if you've got cross polarization, it won't excite each other as well as they would if they were the same. So, yeah, I think I've said it all really. You, you need to, you need to, a fair amount of, of whack to get into the thing until you get round the corner, sort of thing, where you can visually see it. Anyway, let's give it another go. G3 BKB. M0 MSN. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, good morning. I'll let you carry on um, and I'll come in when you're ready. Yeah, right. Back to you, Andy.